Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to America's massive military airplane that is named after a porn star. Um, I was suggested this through someone on my Patreon, and I was really close to not doing reactions today. I was feeling a bit meh, but I thought, you know what, I've been in a routine, probably my best routine in terms of doing videos and reactions for a good few months now. Like, I've been really inconsistent with posting recently, and I was like, do I really want to end it just because I'm feeling a bit meh nah and i enjoy doing reactions as well and it's fun seeing these types of videos and also i mean this one maybe i don't really care about the name but america's massive military airplane this video was literally posted five days ago so it's obviously i guess massive i guess it's a new plane i don't know maybe it's a recently built plane i'm not too sure but we're going to check this out hopefully going to enjoy if you want to see some more of my reactions links are in the description to my patreon and all that good stuff but let's jump into this and see what is so special about this military airplane meet fred the largest fred. strategic airlifter in the united states air force fred fred is not a porn star unless it's someone else and fred is a weird one with many unique features that boggles yeah. your mind like the 90 oh degree days. rotating landing gear the fact that it can kneel down the ability to travel in reverse yes in reverse and its the strange fuck? passenger deck with seats that face backward toward the rear of the airplane Look at the darkness. Being a strategic airlifter, Fred can transport anything, be it submarines, trucks, or intercontinental ballistic missiles. What? Except for one thing, which would have looked so cool on Fred's resume. But it's not what you think. Now you're probably curious who this Fred is. Well, Fred is the nickname for Lockheed C-5 Galaxy transport aircraft. I just couldn't say earlier what Fred stands for because YouTube doesn't like profanity during the first 30 seconds of a video. Wait. But since we're in the clear now, meet Fred. <laughs> ridiculous economic disaster. <laughs> US what? Air Force. Oh shit. Which was ridiculous economic disaster. <laughs> Wait, I'm so confused. Uh, my head is a bit fried, but where's the porn star? I'm confused. The C-5 Galaxy got this nickname because of the enormous cost overruns during the development of the aircraft, okay. which was due to the ever-changing capability requirements by the US Air Force. But aside from Fred, the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy has other nicknames, like Big Mac, Cumulus Illuminous, and Linda Lovelace. Ooh, I see some of you who are lucky teenagers in the 70s recognize that name. Linda Lovelace was an American actress oh, who specialized shit. in adult films. Oh. The C5 Galaxy can okay. kneel and take huge loads from both ends. <laughs> Bro, relax. God damn. He's getting a bit too into it. The C5 Galaxy can kneel and That's crazy though. That is weird how it could do that. I don't know how quickly sped up it is, but that's still wild how it can just just kneel down like that. Take huge loads from both ends. <laughs> and that reminded some people of our late actress. So before we get into the unique features of the C5 Galaxy, you should probably know about Fred's relationship with Boeing 747. Spoiler alert, the 747 can do some stuff that Fred couldn't. During the 1960s, Lockheed, Douglas, and Boeing competed to design a new large military aircraft, the C5 Galaxy. While the US Air Force considered the Boeing design to be superior to that of Lockheed, Boeing lost the competition to Lockheed's less expensive design. But don't feel bad for Boeing, because they went on to develop the highly successful Boeing 747 yeah. civilian airplane. I mean, that's the most common plane in the world now. Which took advantage of the high bypass engine technology that they had developed for the C-5A. While there are lots of speculations that Boeing 747 came out of the C-5 program, it appears not to be the case, as Boeing's C-5 design differed quite a bit from that of the Boeing 747. But enough with history. Let's shift gears and go in reverse, just like Fred can. But there's a problem. While the C-5 can travel backwards on the ground using reverse thrusters, Look it doesn't have- the size of it. It looks so big, I wonder how it can even take off. ...have a backup camera, like today's cars do. The solution is to open the rear cargo door, wow. where a spotter would sit. All it takes is to advance the throttles off of the idle just a little bit on the reverse thrusters for Fred to move backwards. And there is no beeping when going backwards, like you hear on trucks and bigger vehicles. But the truth is, many aircraft can back up on their own thrusters. 
be it an old Saab 37 Vigan or military transport aircraft like the C-17 Globemaster or an older C-130 Hercules. Similarly to military aircraft, commercial jets like the DC-9 can also travel backwards using reverse thrusters, but they almost never do. Because usually they're dragged by... When I get... A, when I... I've flown a, flown a few times recently, and... You do go backwards, but I'm assuming you get. I always assumed you're just getting dragged back because they like usually attach something to like pull you backwards, right? But maybe it's quite. I don't know. Maybe it's more common than I'm thinking. See, reverse thrusters are most commonly used during landing to decelerate a fast-moving aircraft by That's reversing the, the direction of thrust. I didn't even know these things opened up like this. What the hell? With a few exceptions, civilian aircraft are banned from using reverse thrusters to back up at airports. Oh. And that's why you typically see a small tug moving the aircraft out of the gate. The ban is mainly due to safety concerns, as the reverse thrust can stir up debris that can damage the engine or anyone nearby. Reverse thrust is also very loud. Is that dogs barking in the video? And consumes fuel on the nearby. Reverse thrust is also. Bro, well, I swear I heard dogs bark. I don't know if it was in the video on here, but no one has dogs here. Very loud and consumes fuel unnecessarily. In addition, new high pass engines cannot safely use the reverse thrusters until they are already moving. So Sounds pushed. like reverse thrust. They're literally pushing it backwards. Until they are already moving. What the hell? Sounds like reverse thrusters can be pretty dangerous on the ground. But what would happen if you reverse the engine's thrust mid-flight? You may be surprised, oh but thrust reverses are routinely used mid-flight on the C5 Galaxy. According to pilots, Fred's wings produce so much lift that the airplane doesn't want to come down from altitude. But with a little encouragement, by putting on thrust reverse on the two inbound engines, Fred descends quite quickly. Holy shit. In fact, reverse thrust can be used on many aircraft while in flight in order to speed up the rate of descent, which could reach between 10,000 feet to 18,000 feet per minute. Oh my god. The C5 Galaxy can also carry passengers since it has a 73 passenger deck above the cargo hold. But unlike commercial jets, the seats on this deck are facing backwards for one simple reason. Back in the day, Lockheed discovered that rear-facing seats are actually safer for passengers compared to front-facing seats. That's Why? because when aircraft come to a sudden stop, say during a crash, passengers can put their head and back against the seat, and the seat would absorb most of the destructive energy of a crash. But if it's safer, why don't commercial jets have backwards... Wait, god damn, that does make a lot more sense, but like he's about to say, that is strange how they've not incorporated that in commercial flight seats. According to one theory, it's because forward-facing seats are more profitable for airlines. Let what? me explain. Since backward seats need to be able to absorb the crash energy, they would have to take more strain from the passengers when compared to forward-facing seats. Therefore, the backward seats have to be reinforced to absorb this energy, which would make them heavier. Adding weight to aircraft means increased fuel consumption, which translates to less profit for the airline. What the so hell? kudos to Lockheed for going backwards in yeah. the name of safety and providing some nice resting area for the crew of the C5, which includes bunk beds and a nice lounge area. The washroom is roomy as well. By the way, it's my dream to fly in the C5, so if you get connections, hook me up. While the C5 Galaxy is the largest cargo plane in the United States Air Force, it is not the largest in the world. The Ukrainian AN-225 Maria which was destroyed by Russian forces, was able to carry 250 tons. What the hell? It's been reported that a second Maria is now being worked on in a secret facility. Apparently, all the essential components for a second airframe had been previously manufactured. But with Maria gone, for now, the largest cargo airplane is the AN-124 Ruslan, which is able to carry 150 tons of cargo. Look at the belly on that thing. God damn, it's looking pregnant. The C5 Galaxy, in comparison, can only carry 125 tons, which only. is still a lot, as it equates to 25,844,746 ping-pong balls. 
But on a practical note, you can fit one CH-47 Chinook tandem rotor helicopter inside Fred's cargo bay. Damn. Or you could fit three AH-64 Apache helicopters. Three? Jeez, God damn, that's crazy. It's also so, I know it mentioned it at, near the start, but how it can open up from both sides. It kind of looks like a snake. A snake when it's trying to eat, I don't know, just trying to eat something too big for its mouth. For Tetris lovers, removing the rotor blades and stabilizers allows for fitting six Apache helicopters into the C5. You could also fit one Coast Guard boat or even a Mark V Special Operations boat. Even the fuselage of a C-130 would fit inside. What the hell? Look at this. How can that fit? That literally is the closest, tightest fit possible. The C-5 can also accommodate the transport of 10 light armored vehicles weighing 12 tons each or fit in two Bradley infantry fighting vehicles. An A-10 Warthog would also fit, and so what? would 36 standard pallets. After all, the C-5 is a strategic airlifter. Just to put things in perspective, during Operation Desert Storm, C-5 galaxies only made up 12% of the combined airlift fleet, yet they carried 44% of all airlift cargo. Oh my days. The U.S. Air Force even managed to airdrop a Minuteman intercontinental ballistic missile from the C-5 as they were conducting research to use the C-5 Galaxy as a platform to launch nuclear missiles. Upon the extraction of the load, the ICBM was released from its cradle, after which the Minuteman engines ignited, proving that you can launch ICBMs from airborne platforms. But what was that one thing that Fred couldn't carry? That would be the space shuttle. Huh? If you're wondering, what the hell is? It's bigger than a space. I mean, that shouldn't be a surprise, I guess. But seeing this holding a space shuttle looks crazy. What the hell? And it's so much bigger. Why the Boeing 747 could transport the space shuttle, but not the C5? It all came down to the tails. The C5 has a T tail which would have been affected by the airflow turbulence created by the shuttle. It was the 747's regular tail that won the competition. But what's interesting is that even though the C-5 is capable of airlifting main battle tanks, they rarely do. Fred is capable of transporting two M1 Abrams tanks at the same time, but the US Air Force would rather not do that. The first reason is that airlifting tanks is incredibly expensive and inefficient. Makes a lot of sense, actually. A more efficient way of transporting tanks and even other cargo ships on boats, right? Armored vehicles over long distances is by rail or sea. Yeah. As a result, tank airlifts are incredibly rare, but they have happened on occasion. The largest airlift of tanks using C-5 Galaxy happened in 1973 during the Arab-Israeli War when Israeli forces suffered heavy losses and needed to be resupplied by the United States. The US government sent 29 M60A1s and M48A3s to Israel using C5 galaxies, while the remaining 200 units were transported by sea. And even though the C5 could carry two tanks at once, it only carried one because of concerns over the airframe. Similarly today, while the C-5s can transport two 60-ton M1 Abrams tanks at the same time, the sheer weight of these vehicles results in a lot of stress on the airframe, wearing out the airplane prematurely. This is why C-5s only carry one Abrams tank at a time, and only if an emergency delivery is required. It's worth noting that back in June of 1989, Fred carried four light tanks at once oh, when wow. it performed a world record airdrop. The C-5B airdropped four, four... It airdropped the tanks? Wait, wait, what? I was not expecting it to just go on about that. I was just thinking it... it, it I don't know. It just... They tra it traveled to somewhere and it landed and then let them out. No, it's just literally just parachuting them out. What? Don't say they went straight into battle. I'm sure they didn't, but still, this is wild. 42,000 pound Sheridan tanks and 73 combat ready troops over Fort Bragg in North Carolina. The paratroopers though had to wait for the tanks to go first because scientific research shows that a tank landing on you is directly correlated with ruining an otherwise fine day. 
The C-5 also has one of the highest operating costs of any aircraft in the U.S. Air Force I at $100,941 per hour. Oh, but it's still wow. slightly behind the B-2 bomber and the E-4 Night Watch. One of the reasons for this high cost is fuel. Aside from the 125 tons of cargo, the C-5 Galaxy also has to carry fuel, and a lot of it. In fact, Fred's 12 integral wing tanks can hold 51,450 gallons of jet fuel, which is equivalent to six railroad tankers. What? And oh my god, are you nuts? Jeez. Jet fuel, which is equivalent to six railroad And they're massive. Tankers. <laughs> wow. And sometimes that's not even enough, <laughs> so the aircraft has to be refueled mid-flight. What the hell? With all that weight, it makes you wonder. What kind of landing gear can handle the sheer weight of this massive bird? The landing gear of the much heavier Airbus A380 has 22 tires. But the C5 Galaxy, even though lighter, has an additional 6 tires for a total of 28. But that's for a good reason. The A380 can only operate out of airports with reinforced runways and taxiways. But I just Do look at I look at this and I'm like, how can they even like take off? They look so big and so low, and like the wheels, I don't know. It's just look. I'm looking at this and I'm like, how can these big ass planes even take off? Due to its weight, but the C5 was designed so that it could operate out of all kinds of runways. Fred's 28 tires and their unique design spread out the weight of the airplane over a larger area which allows it to taxi on unpaved surfaces, including snow and even mud. Bro, what the yeah, hell? Yeah, surprisingly, mud, or more correctly, wet soil, does not interfere with the functionality of the landing gear, <laughs> at least in this artificially soaked soil. During testing, it was found that Fred had the most difficulty, that is, requiring the highest thrust, only on the first and second passes. After that, the C5 would have compacted the soil enough to make it easier to taxi. Lockheed even performed similar tests on soil that was covered by 12 to 14 inches of snow. Not what? surprisingly, the aircraft had no issues taxiing around and even unloading its cargo. Finally, the C-5 can also take off from unpaved runways, with most of the runway taking off as well. <laughs> Jeez! Oh my Several god! Several other considerations were taken into account when designing Fred's landing gear. One aspect was the C-5's requirement for a wide center of gravity range, which allowed it to transport mixed loads. Secondly, Fred has a unique ability to kneel to minimum ground clearance, which helps in loading the cargo. As a result of this requirement, having four nose tires allowed for the spreading of the weight when loading heavy cargo such as tanks. Additionally, kneeling is especially important as it can lower the cargo deck to the height of a truck bed which facilitates loading and unloading operations. These special requirements meant that in order to fit the wheels inside the fuselage, the landing gear assembly had to be designed so it could rotate 90 degrees before stowage. In case you're wondering how the tires are changed, you could either jack the whole aircraft up in order to perform maintenance on all the tires and brakes, what? or you could do it individually because each set of wheels can also be individually raised for easy access during maintenance. The C5s were produced in two batches. One of the batches was defective to say the least. 81 C5As were produced between 1968 and 1973, and 50 C5Bs were produced between 1985 and 1989. The defects surfaced in the mid-1970s, when wing cracks were found in the C-5A fleet. The decision was made to limit the maximum weight on all C-5As to 50,000 pounds. Then 77 C-5As underwent a re-winging program between 1981 and 1987 at a cost of $7.1 billion in 2023 money. Oh wow, that's a lot. The redesigned wing featured a newly designed aluminum alloy, which didn't exist when the aircraft was first produced. New wings have a structural service life of over 50,000 hours. The C-5Bs, of course, were already built with new wings and more than a hundred additional system modifications. Bro, watching it take off is mental. Like you can just, I, can't, I mean, you just can't understand how much power goes into the engine and the strain it is just to take off alone.
it's just so massive. I don't know how. I mean, it, it makes sense because it's just physics and stuff. But you look at it and you just, I don't understand how it can take off like that. It just looks too big. Of course, already built with new wings and more than a hundred additional system modifications. That it Humans are crazy, you know, how we've even made these things possible. It's just, it's ridiculous. Do you reckon there's going to be like a limit in terms of the size you can build for like these cargo planes or um, these these military planes, the, the bigger they get, I guess, the harder it will be to function certain things. And I also assume it means the cost of using them will be even more. But just maybe there'll be a technology soon. The next technologies that they're looking for is cheaper ways of the fuel or the gas fuel or whatever gas. Um, What's it called? Airplane, airplane fuel, because that's a lot more expensive. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. It improved reliability over the legacy C-5As. In 1998, the US Air Force decided to further modernize the fleet of C-5s based on a study that showed 80% of the C-5 airframe service life was still remaining. As a result, 52 C-5 Galaxies were upgraded to the C-5M Super Galaxy variant with the remaining airframes being retired in 2017. The C5M Super Galaxy... Wait, is this just a graveyard for planes? Is it? It must be. What the hell? The money that would have went into all of these just sitting there. I mean, maybe they're not. Maybe they're just waiting to be repaired or something. I don't know, but... I assume that's not the case. And the amount of space it would be using as well, because even the small ones, even like... I don't know, these planes here, they look tiny compared to these, but they're massive. Planes being retired in 2017. The C5M Super Galaxy featured new avionics, glass cockpit, new autopilot, and most importantly, new engines, the General Electric CF6 engines. The new engines, however, were not new technology. The CF6 engines entered service in 1971. Nevertheless, they had been upgraded over the years and were used extensively on Boeing 767s and 747s. They provide 20% more thrust than the legacy TF-39 engines and were also much quieter. The fleet of Super Galaxy is expected to remain in service at least until 2040. Shit, there we go. America's massive military airplane that is named after a porn star. I mean, that was mentioned for like two seconds but Fred is a special man he's big he's useful and can deliver large loads <laughs> bro these innuendos are too much sometimes I imagine a gunship variant using the C5 with two 105 millimeter gun it will be absolutely inefficient and probably be useless but it would look cool as shit but yeah here we go hopefully you enjoyed this reaction if you want more reactions to this channel let me know in the comments because I think this is probably the number one channel now for this sort of content like this one here why protecting tanks is getting much more difficult. This is the sort of reaction that I feel like I'll do very soon because it's just something that interests me. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this reaction. If you want more of this stuff, let me know in the comments. And yeah, until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.